This tutorial is only a couple minutes long. I will show you, however, how to design this for any letter two ways starting at minute five and 40 seconds. So first of all, I wanna just show all of our new friends how to create something like this inside of XCS using something that has been created. I created this three item piece inside of Adobe Illustrator and what is going to happen is you'll ungroup it. You'll validate the size of all of them. You move all of them at the same time. And then you can duplicate this layer, which I will be using four or five of as many times as you need. Okay. So that is how you set up your file. Now, right now, these are all set on cut or on engrave just so that you can see them, but we would want to indicate cut and I'll go through each of those settings and everything in just a second. So I know I'm on a 12 by 12 piece of basswood plywood for this, and I know I'll need extras of these. So all I'm doing is hitting copy paste, which is command or control C and command or control V. You can also also right click to get multiple copies. Okay, so if you want to put all of them on one board, you're gonna have to be a little smaller or if you're using the S1, you can get a bit bigger of a board. Either way, you're going to end up loading your material and then we can really map out what we need, especially with the Xtool S1. So you won't even need a lot of pinpoint magic that the algorithm of XCS and the S1 do. First, we just need to load our material. You can see mine's 12 by 12, and I am going to pin mine down using the honeycomb. You can use the slats as well. So whatever makes your heart happy. I'm going to put the laser module crosshair right over my material, making sure it's level and flat. And then I'm going to come into the software. I can from here hit this distance material setting. You can either choose basswood here and we'll do your own user defined settings or you can use the system. So I'm going to hit the distance. This is what happens in the machine. Our distance gets loaded for us and then we just can mark exactly where we want to put it. So we hit start marking. Um, I'm going to put these on not output right now. I'm just going to show you these can be put on output. That is how you determine what to do. Now, all of our pieces are not going to be engraved. They're actually going to be cut. So do not forget to change it. You can see here my, because we chose a reference material, I have reference settings. My machine does not cut basswood at 115. It cuts it at 107. So I'm going to manually change mine. You will have done your test. So we hit start marking and the rectangle. And then what we're going to do, I already started my uh, laser module in the top left. So I'm going to hit start. It locks in that first vertex. We're going to move the module slowly, making sure our pins are not in the way. And then we're going to position it, hit start on the machine again. Now, when you hit start that second time on a square, it's going to load it in. We hit end marking and done. And now we're ready to position our material or our um, design right inside our material. So we can't get this wrong because of the pinpoint positioning. So we know exactly that this one will fit. So instead of just two on a board, we can actually get three. I'm going to change all three of those to output. That fourth one over there is not. So when framing happens, this is what your laser module is going to move to start, frame it out, and then come back down to wherever you had it. You can home it or not, but I'm going to close it here, hit framing complete, and I'm going to turn on my inline fan, open my blast gates. And here you can see this job. You can run the laser uh, trajectory. You can just either push play or drag this little thing here and you can see how it's going to map itself out. You can change that if you would like manually. You can also see down here on the left hand side, it's going to take about 12 minutes because I am at a slow speed of seven. It gives me a hey don't walk away warning. And then we're going to hit start in the software, start on our machine and look at it go. She's so fun to watch. So I then have to make these a couple more times. So I'm going to load another piece of basswood. I'm going to measure, I'm going to frame and I'm going to cut those out as well. Now, once everything is cut out, you can see all I have to do is just bang that on the wood and I have all of my pieces. So I'm going to seal everything first and then I'm going to actually spray paint it white because we only need some pretty stuff on a couple layers. So once everything has been painted, which I'm not going to make you sit through, I seal it. 
I'm using wood glue and super glue to assemble and you can see I have one pretty front piece, the painted uh, flowers, three additional pieces of frame and this back piece that's been painted blue on the front and white on the back. And I alternate dots of wood glue and super glue, making sure we're not getting any seepage because we're going to stack these and squish them together. You can see all of my inner frames are only pretty on the outside because that's all they have to be. We're going to make sure the inside edge is painted, but other than that, we don't need anything else. On the very, very top layer, I protected it before I clamped it, and this, a few hours later, is ready to go. For those of you who want to learn how to design this yourself, keep watching. Everyone else, let me know what you think of uh, the project below. So working file, test file, and now we're going to do a design. These are canvases. Um, you can create these by clicking on the word design up there where that is. I'm going to just choose a font. For this, I'm choosing Victoria. And I'm just going to type out the letter E. That's it. I am going to make the type of font so this is our font right below it will have a type so you may have bold italic underlined right here mine has multiple formats for this particular font it's a great font by the way it is a paid font but I use it a lot anyway I have all of these options I want the regular rounded so we get those nice beautiful rounded corners without having to do any work you can see them here this was my illustrator file remember so I'm challenging myself to do these tutorials in XCS 2.0 because this machine is nice. This, this machine is nice, this software is nice, so let's just match up the sizing here. If I copy this from Illustrator, we're not going to get the same thing, right? We can make the same size 6.5 or 6.656, but we are not getting it to look the same. So how we do that, you can adjust it this way, you can unlock it and adjust it that way, it's still not gonna look the same. And the reason is, is because this is compound parts put together. Okay, so let me undo all of that and get this back to normal. Uh, we're going to go back to 6.656. You can make yours any size. All right, I'm just matching what I've done over here. To get this outer rim inside of XCS, it's actually a two-part process. So I'm going to, there you go. We're just, I'm just showing it's the same size, right? So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put an original over here on the right. I always recommend doing that because we can mess up some stuff sometimes, right? So now that we have this E, we're going to change the look of it and create another piece by going down here to outline. So for this one, you can actually turn off the inner outline for bitmap, don't worry about it. Now, we can move this slider to adjust this piece on the outside and that's what we're gonna do. You can do whatever you want. I recommend doing at least one quarter of an inch thick because otherwise it's a little flimsy and it's a little harder to handle. So once you've determined whatever size is happiness for you, you can measure that by creating a rectangle and just putting it right over this border here, any rectangle, and you will be able to get the dimensions either in millimeters or inches. So just make sure, make sure you like it all the way around, hit okay to lock it in. And that doesn't look anything like it, right? But hold on. So now we don't have one piece like this letter E over here. Maybe put it on a different layer so you can just make sure everything is different. We're working on blue. But under blue, we have two pieces now in our objects list, right? We have the inner E, which we originally started with, and then we have this outer E. So where's our line? Right now, the system will cut an inner E and an outer E and it will give you something, but it's not going to be something we can work with. So we highlight both of them. I'm just going to make it 6.656 to match the other one. And now we're going to use the combine function to get this piece. Remember, we had this pretty piece, we had the back piece, and we had this framing piece. So this framing piece is what we're connecting or what we're making now but we'll also make the back piece, okay? So again, this one's the illustrator, so we're gonna move it out of the way. This one here, we highlight both of these pieces and we're going to duplicate it. So you can hit Command C or Command, or, or Control C. We're going to unite two, so now we have the big back piece. That's our back piece. Now we go, we're gonna do the opposite and we're gonna highlight both of these two. Remember, we have the back piece and we have the inner. 
highlight both of those and go to the combine menu, but choose the second one instead of unite, we're going to choose subtract. You can also choose subtract to overlap depending on which one works for you and which one's in front. So now if you see, if I lay this over that, you can see it's only an outline, but if you can't tell, just go to engrave and look, now you can see it's only an outline, right? Now that outline is not only gonna be our frame, it's also going to be the basis for our design piece, okay? So now we have our two pieces here and those have to stay there because we need those two pieces. So I'm just gonna move them up. I'm gonna move that out of the way a little. We don't need that piece, you can actually delete it. And then these two, we're just gonna move out of the way because we do need these two pieces. They are, they are our design. So we're gonna move them out of the way. Now this piece here is what we're gonna work with. I'm actually going to delete um, the Illustrator one too because that was just to show you. Now. If you are wanting to stay in XCS, I'm gonna show you how to create using one of their vectors. I'm also gonna show you how to create using something outside of XCS. So this is a, what is it, Monstera leaf, and I'm just going to mess with it. So this is the transform box that's around it. You can increase the size, you can command and uh, copy and paste it. You can unlock it so that you can warp it, whatever you wanna do. Just make sure that whatever you're doing, you have this thing touching multiple points. You see how that little stem is all by itself? We're not gonna want that. We want something that is going to give us a nice sturdy construction. So I'm just going to position this over that stem so it has something to grab onto. Now I'm going to duplicate this a whole bunch of times and just manipulate it really quickly because you don't need me to tell you how to do that, right? What else I wanna tell you is you can see I'm keeping all of the things on the inside of the E. You don't have to keep all of the things on the inside of the E, by the way, because look, I'm gonna tell you how to correct it. I added a couple circles, you don't have to do that. But either way, I'm putting that E on a different layer and we are going to lock it. When I hit uh, this orange layer, it highlights the vector and I'm going to hit this lock key so that we do not mess with it. And now we can just select all of this stuff and hit combine, unite. We want all of this to be one piece, sort of. That means we hit this first one, which is under the combine menu and unite. Now it's all gonna move as one. Isn't that fancy? There are two ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you both. The first is the absolute most easiest way. And that is we're just gonna not combine the E and the design First, we're gonna manipulate the design and we're going to then uh, combine it. So I went into the node management and I'm going to highlight all of these that are sticking out past the E and hit delete. See, there they go. Now, you can continue with that, but it's super slow because there's no actual true management of node numbers inside of here. And I am an impatient crafter. I'm not waiting on all that to load every single time because there are thousands of nodes. Now remember, we have this E locked. Nothing you will do will affect the E. So let's do it the easy way. And this is the way I recommend inside of XCS. Go get a rectangle or a circle, whatever floats your fancy. Cover the edge of whatever the outline is of our E. Highlight both, so it's cut right now, but hold on. You can change that to engrave if you wanna see where it covers. Then you just select the rectangle and the design and you go over here to the combine menu and hit subtract and biggity bam, it's gone. That's so much faster. You don't have to wait for the node management to load, which honestly, with something this size, it will have thousands and thousands and thousands of nodes. So you can come in here and delete them like this, but I don't have time for that. So I'm gonna hit done and I'm just gonna quickly do the rest of it using rectangles because I'm lazy. And again, you don't have to change it to engrave, but to show you where it is, you can go from score to engrave and remove it by selecting both of those pieces and going to the combine and subtract. So both of them are selected. The E is gonna stay the same. Boop, now they're all gone. Isn't that fancy? Now I'm going to select orange. I'm going to unlock that vector. So now we have the ability to manipulate all of it. So I'm gonna select all of it and then I'm gonna hit object, combine, unite.
and you're done. You set that to cut and you're done. Do you understand how easy that is? When they change this software, we are so lucky. So again, you would do the same thing. You're gonna make sure it all aligns because you didn't, if you lock the E, you did not mess that up, okay? But you can horizontally and vertically align it just to make sure everything's set. This right here, this whole thing is done. You can actually duplicate everything and whatever. But I'm gonna put it on a different layer and I'm gonna uh, hide it and lock it because I'm going to show you what happens if you find this beautiful piece of a cherry blossom design and you want to use that, which is what your girl did. Okay. It's for my daughter. I already made her a wall hanging with this. So I'm making stuff for her office. So you are going to position this wherever you want. And you're also going to position this where you're okay with certain things. Meaning I hate that blossom on the left where it's only partial, but I'm just going to tell you. We're going to duplicate this. You put it on a different layer. Just set it over to the side. You don't need to lock it. We're going to take our rectangle. We're going to do the same thing. Okay. All I'm doing right now is just removing the bits of that vector that I don't want. Right. Could you go into the node software and do that? Yeah. Are we too lazy? Also, yes. So this down here, these little corners up here, you can go into the node software or node management software for that, or you can remove them via the rectangle, whatever you want. I'm going to lock the E because again, all we want to be manipulating is the cherry blossom. And you can come in here, y'all, these are thousands of circles stacked on each other, which is why I say I edited out the wait time it's it's a lot of nodes and you can also error so if i delete this section right here you see how those black lines are there watch what happens when i hit done and it locks this piece in tis ugly because you just made a path so i'm just saying if you do that don't freak out go grab a rectangle <laughs> highlight both hit subtract and look she's gone so anyway you just go ahead and you'd clean up the rest of it and then always save your file save your file there's no auto save save your file okay now let's manipulate this girl guess what we're gonna do we're not gonna open 10,000 nodes in our software we're gonna take some rectangles we're gonna overlap them select everything and hit combine subtract easy and now this little transform box can be manipulated in size but so can the little turny turny function which is that circle above it so i'm going to turn it to where i want it size it down so i get a little bit more of a flower use a rectangle to remove the rest and we're right back now where we can unlock those two pieces and combine them look at that now we unlock the blue e and we combine everything that's it and you can make thousands of these if you want to make a whole bunch of letter E's, you can do the entire alphabet is my point. Now I'm gonna give you a big warning. Because we do not have the ability to be simplifying the number of nodes, you still, if you want to export this, you have to do some node management. That single thing alone is thousands of nodes. If you sold me that file, meaning if you tried to sell that as an SVG, you would not get great reviews. It's going to be slow, it's going to be clunky, a cricket machine or anything is gonna be very, very slow if you right click and save as ex or export as SVG, right? If you wanna do this, it's fine. You just need an extra node management software because you're going to have to clean up the nodes. Guess what, y'all? That's it for me today. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, be sure to subscribe because I'm going to be sharing tons of tips like these. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you being here.